Hi, how are you? My name is Robert and, from now on I thank you for watching this video in which I am going to show the main measurement functions of the Fluke 435 Series 2 Power Quality Analyzer. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and review the available videos. In my previous video about the power quality analyzer Fluke 435 Series 2, we had a first contact with the unit, and among other things I commented that the menu key gave us access to all the measurement functions of the equipment. It is time to see these functions. For that, we turn on the unit and press the menu key, and as you can see, the word menu appears at the top of the screen to indicate that we are precisely in this option. Below, there are nine lines with the different measurement functions. With the up and down arrow keys we can move over these measurement functions. Below the list of measurement functions, there is a blue area where we can see the indications page 1 over the F1 key, page 2 over the F2 key, and finally OK over the F5 key. With F1 and F2 we can alternate between two different sets of measurements. Once the function that interests us has been selected, with F5 we accept the selection of that function. There are several models of analyzers in the 435 family. The most basic model, the 434, only has the features listed on the first feature page. The 435 in addition to the functions of the first group also includes the functions of the second group. Although in this particular equipment, on the second page of measurements, there are two functions that are not normally available in the 435. They are the function called shipboard, volts, amps, hertz, that is present only in the Fluke 437 model and the function called motor analyzer which is present only on the Fluke 438 model. Let's now quickly see what each of these functions do. The volts, amps, hertz function allows us to measure and record basic parameters such as voltages, currents, frequency, peak voltages, and peak amps. Since it is not always possible to view all the parameters on the instrument screen at the same time, using the up and down keys, it is possible to scroll the screen to see all the parameters that are available below. The dips and swells function is specifically designed to capture events or disturbances associated with voltage, such as interruptions, dips, overvoltages and rapid voltage variations. The harmonics function will allow us to measure and record the voltage, current and power harmonics up to the 50th harmonic, its associated THD and also the interharmonics. Data can be viewed in numerical, trend or frequency spectrum form with typical vertical bars. Given the large number of nonlinear loads in industrial facilities, it is essential to know how to analyze these harmonics. The power and energy function allows us to measure and record parameters such as active, reactive, apparent powers, power factor, harmonic power, power associated with unbalances, fundamental power, displacement factor or cos phi, voltages and currents, and active, apparent and reactive energies. You will also be able to measure and record the active energy in the direction of the load and the energy reinjected into the grid. As you can see, it is a very complete function to perform energy efficiency audits. Then comes the energy loss calculator function, which allows us to see and record the active, reactive, harmonic and unbalanced powers that we have already mentioned, but also, the losses that occur in the distribution cables associated to those powers. We get that information in watts but also their economic quantification. If you have reactive, harmonic or unbalanced problems, this function is very important in order to decide and justify, for example, between the installation of a capacitor bank, a harmonic filter, or simply balancing the loads. The next function is the power inverter efficiency function. With this function you can measure the DC power at the input of the inverter and the AC power at the output of the inverter. In this way the instrument can calculate and provide the efficiency of the inverter. It is very useful, for example, for photovoltaic installations. But remember, to measure DC power, you must use a current clamp that measures DC current since flexible probes cannot measure DC currents. Next function that appears is the unbalance function, which, as its name indicates, allows you to measure and record voltage and current unbalances. Here, we can also see the phasor diagram with fundamental effective values and phase shifts for voltages and currents. 
In this case we have two important parameters, the negative and zero component percentages that tell us how big is the unbalance in the installation. The inrush function is used to measure the starting current of the motors. This current must be measured following a special procedure, so that, in this way it really reflects the current that would be perceived by the electrical protection that should protect the motor without unnecessary tripping. In this case we have to define the current that triggers the data capture. The last function in this group is the monitor function. This function is very important for those who want to make an analysis of the electrical quality according to the regulations, for example according to the EN 50 160 standard. In real time the instrument measures the parameters associated with the quality of the voltage, such as the voltage limits, fluctuations, harmonics, voltage imbalance, flicker, etc. and compares them with the standard. We have all the data in numerical form and trends but the unit also provides a bar graph with colors to show, at a glance, compliance with the standard. If we now press F2 we can change O to the second group of measurements. The first function we have is the flicker function associated with the flickering of lights, therefore it is a disturbance focused on people rather than on electrical installations. This variation in the light intensity, measured through the flicker, can cause headaches and other symptoms. The next function, transients, puts the equipment in a high-speed sampling mode, that allows to capture fast voltage transients up to 6000 volts and a duration as small as 5 microseconds. In this mode the unit saves the waveforms associated to these transients that later can be analyzed graphically with cursors to determine the duration and magnitude of the transient in order to define the appropriate protection. The only thing we have to configure is the a limit voltage value that triggers the capture of the transient. Next function, called power wave, allows us to record voltage and current waveforms, without the need of any trigger, in blocks of up to 5 minutes each. It works like a memory oscilloscope. Waveform analysis can be key to determining the cause of certain problems, for example network transfers, disturbances at the output of inverters, etc. Main signaling function allows you to analyze the high frequency control signals that utilities sometimes inject into networks to, for example, remotely control equipments or transmit data. The shipboard, volts, amps. Hertz function is present only in the 437 analyzer, and it is designed to carry out network analysis at 400 Hz, for example for power systems in ports and airports. Airplanes and different types of ships and submarines use electricity at 400 Hz in order to reduce the size of the power supplies. Normal analyzers only analyze networks at 50 or 60 Hz. In addition, for military ships there are power quality regulations that require special measurement parameters that the Fluke 437 has implemented through this function. Finally, we have the motor analyzer function that is present only in the 438, although there is a firmware upgrade option available for the other instruments. This function allows to measure the rotational speed, the mechanical torque, the mechanical power and the energy efficiency of three-phase motors fed directly from the network or fed by variable speed drives. For motors fed directly from the mains it also includes the possibility of graphically analyzing the level of motor overload according to NEMA standards. And so, we have reached the end of this presentation. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if this video has been interesting for you, do not forget to drop a like so that I can know that you liked it and program new videos on this topic. In the next video we will see how to configure the instrument correctly, a very important aspect to avoid having to repeat the measurement, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and review the available videos. Please, send me also your suggestions for new videos. Thank you very much and see you soon.